you guys, it is me, Laura, and I am doing something a little bit different today. So I've had a lot of people, actually a lot of people, <laughs> messaging me and asking me more questions about card making and wondering if it would be a good hobby to start. The couple of the reasons why I like card making is one, it's something that's easy for me to keep set up on my desk. I can work on it in, at, for five minutes and then leave or you know, do little spurts like that, but I can also sit down if I have like two hours where Arlen's taking the kids and say, take a break, enjoy it. Like I can work for two hours and really get lost and enjoy it. And I also really like it because it's easy for me to focus on myself and get kind of wrapped up in myself. But when I'm card making, I'm thinking of the people that I'm making the cards for. Sometimes I'm very specifically creating a card from the start for somebody. Um, I'm constantly aware of people who might need to be encouraged or might need to be cheered up. I'm paying more attention to the needs of others in general. And I find that to be really helpful for me and really good for me. So I've, as people have been talking to me, the biggest question that I've been getting has to do with like, what supplies do I need to start? Um, how do I do this without spending a lot of money? Like, what, what do I do? The most basic supplies, which are stamps, um, a stamping tool possibly, depending on the kind of stamp you have, um, and paper, and show you some things that you can do with very minimal supplies so that you can just kind of start and see if it's something that you like. Um, one of the things that I don't actually have to show you, but that can be really helpful, is getting an all-inclusive like card making kit. And um, typically these kits will have ink, they'll have stamps, they'll have paper, everything you need. Um, and there's two that Stampin' Up! offer that are really great. One, and they have everything you need except for adhesives, which you might already have and you might not. And um, I will put videos up there and down there showing you both of these kits. And the videos also tell you what other adhesive you would need to get as well. Um, but each kit makes 20 cards, so that's really considering you're getting your stamps in there and your ink and your paper and your embellishments and everything, that's actually a really good deal. Um, and so that's a good way to start because you can kind of learn a little bit of the basics. And they've got two, Stampin' Up! has two kits right now. They have Oh Happy Day and Watercolor Wishes. But um, Watercolor Wishes is very, very basic, very easy. If you feel like you're all thumbs and just have no idea what you're getting into and aren't really sure, that's the one that I would start with because it's just so easy. Um, and then Oh Happy Day is pretty easy too, but it's got a couple more advanced techniques in it. So those are kind of good starting places if you don't want to spend a lot of money, but you want to see if card making is something that you really like. And with either of these kits, they have examples, like so they can walk you through exactly what to do for all 20 cards, or you can just use the supplies and be creative and <laughs> do your own thing. So they're really flexible in that way. And then today what I'm going to show you is two kinds of cards. I have three cards that I've made that just use um, this crumb cake color paper, cardstock, um, and black ink and a stamp set. And that's it. And I've got three cards here that I'll show you how I did. And that's all the supplies that I use to make these cards. Um, same stamp set for all of them. Um, so that's a really inexpensive way to start. And I also have some cards that I made using only two ink colors on, I didn't use more than two ink colors on any of the cards, and I used a collection of five different colors for all of them together, but only one stamp set. So this is a little sample of what, what I did here. And so I'm going to explain to you a little bit about the stamps, like the different kinds of stamps and what you actually, the basics that you need to start stamping and making cards. And then I will show you a little brief tutorial on how I made some of these. So let's turn this camera around. To start with, you're gonna wanna have some cardstock. Now you can go ahead and get your cards pre-made, pre-folded with the envelopes in crumb cake or whisper white. Or you can go ahead and get some cardstock and cut it down yourself if you have a paper turner. You can just cut it in half and then fold it. Either direction will work fine for a card. And your card is going to end up at five and a half by four and a quarter inches. That is a standard A2 size card. So if you get cardstock, you can do a bunch of different colors or you can just get the pre-made ones that are crumb cake or whisper white. 
You're also going to want to have some stamps when you're doing stamping. And the first kind of stamp you've seen before, it's called a, a wood mounted stamp. It comes with the wood all, and the stamp all together. It's all right there. Um, the bad thing is it takes up a lot of space and it can be expensive to pay for that wood block with every single stamp. But these hold up well, they'll last forever and you can just grab them and use them. And you, I mean, they're just really kind of, it's what you're familiar with. But what they've also done is they took the rubber stamp part of the stamp and took it off and made what's called a clear mount stamp. And it's a little bit sticky on the back, but you can't just stamp with it regularly. So you get a clear block and you put it on the back and there you go. So you have one clear block that you can use with all of your stamps and it makes it a whole lot easier. Now you can get different sizes of this, but I recommend starting out just buying one that is as big as your biggest stamp in the set so that it'll accommodate that and then you can put all the rest of your stamps on that when you're starting out as well. Now the last kind is called a photopolymer stamp. People also call it a clear stamp. And this one is just completely clear as you can see. It works much like a cling mount stamp in that you use the acrylic blocks and trade them out. Now the great thing about a clear stamp is that you can see through it. So if you're doing a technique where you're stamping one on top of the other you can see where it is or if you have to have really precise placement you can do that. And also, these stamps are really flexible. So you see here I have a straight sentiment. It says rainbow. And then I can bend it and make it actually shape like a rainbow. You can also cut these apart if you have a long sentiment and just use part of the words. And they're just really flexible with what you can do with them. Now, those you do have to be a little more careful with, though. Don't store them in the sun. And they're not going to have quite as crisp of detail as the rubber stamps do. But all three of these are great options. Now I'm going to talk to you just a little bit about how to ink up a stamp. I know when we're little we just kind of mash our stamps into the ink pad, but that's not exactly what we're going for here. There's really two main ways to ink up your stamp. You can lightly press it in, and as you can see that's all it takes to get really good coverage on there. And the other way is you can bring your ink pad to your stamp, and you can ink it up that way. And both of these will leave you with a very good impression. Now we're going to talk just a little bit about how to get a really good clear impression. Now the stamp that I'm using is meant to be a little vintage looking so it's not 100% clear and crisp but you notice how I just press firmly, I leave it on the paper and then I pull it straight up and I get a good stamp. Now a lot of things we do when we're younger we learn to rock a stamp but if you look close at this image where I rocked it, it's kind of blurry and it's not a clear image at all. So I'm going to add a little bit more ink to my stamp and see this is another problem, it's just stamping really fast. You didn't give time for the ink to transfer onto the paper so if you want a real solid image you have to just press it down, put some pressure there and lift it straight up and you'll get a really good image. It's a little bit different with the photopolymer stamps because um, you can do them the same way and as you can see here I'm just stamping and doing a clear image but sometimes when you're using photopolymer it doesn't stamp completely. You can see in the middle here, it's really hard to see on camera, but it's not quite as crisp and clear in the middle. So you can put a piercing mat down or some kind of foam down. And then if you stamp on top, see here the rubber stamps, they have that little bit of foam, that little bit of give, so it helps give a clear coverage of the image. So if you put a little foam under your paper and stamp down, again, you can't see it really well on camera, but it's clear and crisp all the way across, and there's not that lighter part in the middle on this stamp. Now, to clean the stamp, I just use a cut up flat baby diaper, <laughs> like the old fashioned kind. They don't pill, they're not fuzzy, so they don't stick on the stamp. So I will just wet that and rub my stamp off. Now sometimes that's not enough to get it clean, or sometimes I have a stickier ink. And in that case, you can use the Stampin' Mist. And there's also a Stampin' Scrub so that you can really scrub off the really, really hard stuff. But for most things, just a cloth, a no pill cloth, and a little bit of water will get it clean. Let's get started on our first card. Now I am just using a crumb cake card base and archival basic black ink to stamp here. And I'm using the beautiful used stamp set. I love this stamp set from Stampin' Up. It's so versatile and it's really great for this kind of basic technique. So I'm just going to take my ink spot and I am going to ink up my stamp. Um, now, I always keep other stamps on the back of my mount, and anyway, that's one of the things that's fun about these acrylic blocks. But I am just stamping this image right in the middle. You can see I'm giving a firm press and coming straight up. And then for my sentiment, I'm going to make sure that I have it on my block straight so that I can stamp it straight. And I'm going to ink that up. It just says, so happy for you. 
and then I'm going to stamp it right there. And there is my completed card. It's very basic, it's very simple, but it still works well. And I'm going to show you a few other cards where I kind of jazz them up a little bit. This one is the same idea. I also put a sentiment inside. And then I just took a colored pencil. You can use anything you have around and just added a pop of color to this dress. And this is a simple way to just take a very simple card and make it look even more fantastic. With this one I just used a ruler and a black pen that I had and I made a border around it and here I just had some scrap ribbon left over from some packaging and I tied it to the top and those are some really simple cards and all you need is your black ink and your card bases and you're good to go and your stamps of course. Now I'm going to do some cards that have two colors in each card. So you need two colors ink. Now I'm starting with these are the 2016 to 2018 in colors and I'm going to be using all of them but you only need two colors for each card and I'm just using this one stamp set that works well with lots of color and I'm going to create some really great cards just using these very basic supplies. So I'm starting out with Emerald Envy here and I'm stamping my sentiment and my balloon just getting it center again using my good stamping method, methods and then I'm taking my um, cloud here and I'm just going to stamp it a few times on there and this is just these two basic colors and here we have a very simple card that looks nice and clean. Now just to add a little bit more fun to it I'm getting the smaller cloud as well and adding that in a couple times and you have a simple card and here I did it in Sweet Sugar Plum and now I am going to ink up a sentiment for my next card and for this I'm using the Archival Black and I'm stamping my sentiment right in the middle. And this is how you can really stretch your stamp set. I'm not using this in a typical way. I'm using my Flirty Flamingo and I am going to ink up the little heart that came with this. Now for this technique I'm going to be stamping off the paper so I need to put some scrap paper behind my card and I'm going to fill this whole card up with hearts so I'm just going to take them and line them up. Now on the second row here I'm kind of starting in the middle so that I can make sure that they're not exactly lined up under each other that they're offset just a little bit and for this card I am just going to keep stamping and it doesn't have to be perfect I think having it not perfect makes it even more fun and kind of you know just shows off that it's handmade just by you and so that's it that's all that there is for this card it's really simple here's another one and on this one I kind of curved the hearts around the sentiment in the middle but there you go another basic card with just two colors of ink now for this one I'm going back to my balloon and I'm stamping it with sweet sugar plum which is one of my all-time favorite colors and um, I'm getting a clear image there and then I am mounting my sentiment and I'm just going to put it right beside it. Now the great thing about this stamp set is there's so many sentiments so you really have a lot of options with what you can do. Now with this we're going to do a similar background as we did in the one just before but we're not doing the whole thing we're making more of a border with it. So I'm going to use my Peekaboo Peach and I'm grabbing my smaller balloon stamp and I'm going to ink that up really well. And when I put my first one on, you kind of have to be aware of the balloon there. So I'm going to try to make the border so that the balloons kind of go around a little bit. So I'm stamping my first one down low and then my second one I'm stamping higher and off the paper. And so then I'm just going to keep going. As you can see, I made a little boo-boo there with that one, but I'm just going to keep going with it. And then I'm going to keep this pattern going all the way off the edge of the paper. Now when I come down to the bottom, I want to keep that staggered pattern in mind, but I need to be mindful of the fact that there is the sentiment there, and I don't want the top of my balloons to be running into the sentiment. So I am just keeping that in mind with my spacing and where I put my balloons and how I do it. Now this card is my son's favorite. He loves all the balloons on here. But again, it's another simple card that you can do that's just really kind of fun. And this one is a congratulations card. I did another one that said sending smiles across the miles. That one I did with Emerald Envy. So this is the last two color card that I'm going to do and I'm stamping my sentiment off in the corner here. You can barely see it on the screen. I'm sorry about that. I will get better about the filming. And then I'm taking my Flirty Flamingo each and I'm stamping my balloon kind of crooked and I'm doing the same with the second one. And that's kind of the main part of my card. But I wanted to add a little more because there's a lot of white space. So I'm taking my um, clouds again and making sure that the shadow is at the bottom of where I'm stamping. And with this last cloud, I'm kind of stamping it over. And there's techniques you can do so that they don't overlap. But for this simple card, I think it looks totally fine like that. 
So these are just some of the cards that we were able to make with just one or two colors of ink and some cardstock. And I'd love to see some of the creativity that you come up with with the supplies that you have. If you want to share them with me, I would love to see them. Leave a comment and let me know below. I hope that was helpful for you if you're just brand new trying to figure out if card making is something that might be good for you and, and need a few ideas to get started. And I will put links to um, my Stampin' Up! shop below with the things that I used and some recommendations for starting out and I am going to also put a hostess code below and I will put the expiration date and everything to make it clear. If you use that code this month then I will send you some free samples of some papers or some die cuts or things like that just as a little thank you um, for kind of supporting me in that way. But let me know if you like this video, if it was helpful for you. I know the lighting is not good. I haven't done videos like this and wasn't really planning on it. But um, like I said, this is something that has been really helpful for me. And I just, if it could be stress relieving for you as well, that would be great. And I just love the idea of spreading joy and encouragement to others. And this is such a great way to do that. Even if it's a small way, I think it can make a big difference. So I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, what your thoughts are, if you'd like to see more videos like this, if this was even helpful, if you have any questions, I'd love to hear. And um, I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.